Humans are one of the most adaptable species on the planet. When we are stressed, our, our, our bodies and our physiology and our minds actually all adapt to that stress. That makes us more capable of handling a subsequent stress. That's what training is all about. Three main things really dictate uh, athletic performance, especially within uh, an endurance context. Uh, the first thing is going to be your VO2 max, or your maximal aerobic capacity. Uh, the second thing is what percentage of that VO2 max can you maintain or sustain for a long period of time. And then the third main thing is how well you can uh, convert metabolic energy to a mechanical energy or mechanical output. Understanding your maximum capacity and understanding the thresholds, we can calculate pretty precisely what your fastest possible time might be. What I need you to do is place this zero part from the light The athletes will come in and complete a staged test either on the treadmill or the bike and they increase either the speed on the treadmill or if you're on a bike the power and we take a lactate sample through their finger so you just do a small finger prick and get a blood reading and we see how this lactate accumulates over time then we know at which speed or which power that the body is starting to accumulate lactate faster than it can be cleared. This point at which lactate production exceeds removal is sometimes called the lactate turn point. This lactate turn point really defines sustainable exercise, which is below that lactate turn point, versus intensities that are unsustainable in nature. If you're exercising above that lactate turn point, you fatigue at a very predictable rate and sometimes that can occur rather quickly. Hemoglobin mass is a measurement of what your oxygen carrying capacity is of your blood. So how many oxygen molecules really can your blood carry around and deliver to your working muscles during exercise? For the hemoglobin mass test, the athletes lie down and they're set up on a mouthpiece that doses a precise amount of carbon monoxide and the system is able to determine how much carbon monoxide the athlete breathes in, um, which is how much then binds to their hemoglobin, and then the system also knows how much is breathed out. So by some calculation, it can determine how much hemoglobin or the carbon monoxide is bound to the hemoglobin and ultimately determine your hemoglobin mass. For the running economy test, what we look at is how much oxygen a particular runner is using at a percent of their VO2 max. A more economical runner will be able to use less oxygen at a given running speed. This is because they're moving very efficient and they have no wasted energy. But someone who's less economical will be um, having a greater proportion of their VO2 max at a given running speed. We get to work with a lot of elite athletes and high level um, performing athletes and we get to translate this knowledge down to the everyday athlete to ultimately help understand their physiology and help them improve in different performance metrics and improve their physiology in general. When we first had the vision for this lab, it was not only understanding these mechanisms that might be limiting human performance, but we also really wanted to translate that out into the community. So this community testing services program is really taking the research and what we know when we do experiments in the lab and translating that to people in the, in the community that really want to improve their performance.